Welcome to the National Heads Up Poker Championship presented by Outback Steakhouse. We're at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas where 64 of the best poker players in the world have come together to crown one Heads Up Champion. In the club's bracket, we have eight tables in action simultaneously. Let's meet the players. At table one, we have Steve Zolotow and Jeff Madsen. At table two, we have Barry Greenstein and Carlos Mortensen. At table three, Shannon Elizabeth and Renee Angelil. At table four, we have Marco Trenello and Phil Locke. At table five, Patrick Antonius and Huck Seed. At table six, Eric Seidel and Umberto Brennis. At table seven, Paul Darden and Chip Reese. And at our feature table, Eric Lindgren goes heads up with Vanessa Russo. Let's get the cards in the air. Every poker player has a relatively big ego by nature, and this is a way to sort of be like, yeah, who's the man? That'd be me. To make this top 64 it is an honor in itself. It's become such a landmark for all the poker players. It's the one tournament you just don't want to miss. A heads up, it's either me or them. One on one all the way through. It's really personal if you lose, so you just don't want to lose to anybody. Very, very tough for the 64 players. Most of them are considered the best in the world. play heads up you have to be aggressive you have to get in there and you have to be able to read your opponent really quickly this event gives you a chance one-on-one -on -one, to test yourself against the best in the world Matt Vaskersian alongside Ali Najat at Caesars Palace Las Vegas for the National Heads Up Poker Championship a look at the matchups in the round of 64 clubs bracket as we get you set for high stakes, single elimination, heads up, no limit, Texas Hold'em. Eight tables in place simultaneously. We get you right to the featured table where Eric E. Dog Lindgren takes so on serious. Vanessa Russo. Huh? So serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I want to win. I'll, you do? I'll, I'll, too. I've never made it past the second round here. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Uh-oh. Eric has had his share of frustration in this tournament. And if you go out of this tournament, you got to wait a whole year to play it again, so. Hopefully. <laughs> you can't wait a whole year to yeah, As long finger. as they invite you, you know, but I keep getting knocked out in the second round, they might not, might not invite me anymore. We move to table three now, where actress poker player Shannon Elizabeth is up against Renee Angelil, the husband and manager of international superstar Celine Dion. Shannon suited with King Nine, she raises to 1,200. Renee with Jack Nine. He calls. Despite their celebrity pedigrees, both of these two have had their fair share of felt time. No strangers to poker. Oh, look at this flop. Shannon Elizabeth has flopped a straight. And Renee has flopped enough to keep him in trouble here. An open ender with middle pair. So Renee checked. Shannon bets 1,200. And that's appropriate. Despite the fact she has such a strong hand, she has to bet here. She doesn't want to let Renee split the pot in the event that he has a draw to a straight or a flush draw to win it. Uh, Renee's in trouble. He's just raised to 4,200. And Shannon has moved all in. Actually, she's just put enough money in to cover Renee. And this is exactly why you don't make that raise if you're Renee. Just call, see what develops. Now you've given away more chips, and you didn't even see the turn. A good early performance from Shannon. Can she continue to draw on her acting experience? There is Nadia, and she just looked at me. James, you are very good in the world history class, yes? I am. Perhaps you could help me with my studies. I'd like to feed all the hungry little children of the world, and much rather help my Poker has become such a great side pursuit for so many actors and actresses, and Shannon Elizabeth's been playing a lot, we're told, the last couple years. Some of these poker players make plenty more than some of the movie stars out there in Hollywood. It is a very lucrative endeavor indeed. 10-6 for Shannon. And big slick for Renee. 
He's choosing to slow play it here, keep the pot small. Flop is 5-8-10, top pair for Shannon. Yeah, and she's got position. Good news for Renee is he didn't commit too many chips to this pot. Renee checked and Shannon bet 800. Well, we've seen Renee real aggressive in this so far. He raises to 2300. Yeah, I think maybe take a stab at the pot by leading. Hope that Shannon gets away from her hand. If she raises you, maybe muck it, but this is a strange way to play Ace King. Shannon called. The turn is a four of spades. All in. All in. And Renee has gone all in. Renee's all in. And he did it really quickly, like it was premeditated. I call. Shannon calls. Well, she's got top hair and a gut shot straight draw. And clearly, she didn't buy Renee's act and here. Renee has ace king. And Shannon has 10 6 for top pair. Renee will need ace. an ace. Shannon is a heavy a favorite here. Renee needs an ace or a king. And On the river, another four, four two pair for Shannon Elizabeth and a first round win as she knocks out Renee Angelil and moves into the field of 32. And you know what, you gotta give credit to both players. Renee stuck with his game plan. He tried to bully Shannon, and to Shannon's credit, she didn't get bullied. Caesars, as we check in with Shauna Hyatt, who's with Shannon Elizabeth. Shannon, congratulations. Thank you. I heard that there was some sort of game plan that you're talking with Cloney. How did you make that all happen? Um, well, I mean, I've been working really hard and practicing, but one of the biggest things, like a change that I've been making just in my overall life, is um, the law of attraction and positive energy yeah. and, and really trying to to picture the cards I need and not to picture the cards I don't want because mm -hmm. I don't want to attract those cards. Do you think you can carry that on through the rest of the tournament? I'm going to try my hardest, but this was a great start. This was my, my short-term goal for today, so I'm excited. All right. Well, good luck, and we'll Thank see you. you in the next round. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so that's the secret, Matt. Yeah. yeah. Tony Robbins, eat your heart out, right? Positive thinking can actually change the next card in the deck. Eric Lindgren on the outback pocket cam with king three suited. And Vanessa Russo with 10-4, she checks. And the flop brings two pair for Lindgren. Now Eric didn't have to slow play this with the straight and flush draw on the board. The turns a 10 of diamonds, it pairs Vanessa's 10. That might be the worst thing to happen to her. Eric bets out. She doesn't have Eric on a king or a jack and she's picked up a pair of 10s with a diamond draw. The river, a second pair for Russo. Now she's really in trouble. She checks. Eric bets 1,200. Vanessa should just call here. Pretty dangerous board. Instead, she raises to 2,400. Now the decision lies with Eric. 24? Can you show me one? That's a minimum raise. She had to raise at least 1,200 given that Eric bet the 12. Unlikely it'll move Eric off his hand, and he makes the call. And Lindgren will drag the pot. All right, first round play continues inside the poker room here at Caesars Palace as we watch the clubs and spades brackets today. And after today's play, the first round in the field of 64 will be complete. Ali, let's talk about the match we're watching now, Vanessa Russo and Eric Lindgren. Matt, not too long ago, Eric Lindgren was an up-and-comer. Now he's got his stripes in the poker world, and it's Vanessa Russo's turn to try to prove herself. It'll be interesting to see whether or not she can measure up to his experience. Great matchup coming on later in the spades bracket. Two former world champs in Joe Hatcham and Chris Moneymaker. Everyone was thrilled to hear these two names pulled out of the machine at the pairings party, Matt. Both of these guys have plenty of experience in big tournament play. They've got a lot of heads-up action under their belts. It's honestly anyone's ball game. And right back to the action, Marco Traniello is a former hairdresser, pro player, and Caesars qualifier. He takes on Phil Locke here. And Marco with suited big slick here raises to 1,800. Oh, somebody's going to get hurt here. Phil Locke with kings. He raises it up to 4,800. We call that a cooler. All in. Marco moves all in. Lock insta calls, turns over the two kings, and Marco's got three oh outs. God, it's only 70-30. It's only 70, 30. To an ace. He can hit hard, it's a straight. <laughs> Why can't he just have king queen like he's supposed to have? Or pocket queens? Don't do it to me. Don't send me home in a body bag. Please, Marco. Give me another chance. Don't do it. He's going to do it, isn't he? Is he going to do it? And here oh, comes the flop. Don't do it, kid. Don't do it. No. Four. 
Flop comes oh, four nine four. No help for Marco like there. Pocket Kings look really good. Lock is in the ballpark. Eighty-seven percent favorite. On, I never root for myself. Okay, bring the ace. If you're gonna bring it, bring it on the turn, not the river. Just get it over <laughs> with the king. Oh, the whole torture on the river. I can't take. Bit of sadomasochism. Phil can't stand the drama. Deuce of clubs on the turn. Ninety-four six. Boy, that's awfully close. The actual <laughs> card player it, magazine it, percentages are 93.7, but that's pretty you know, impressive. Yeah, Very respectable for shooting out of the hip like that. This yeah, he doesn't need an exactly abacus. 94.6. Five of hearts on the river, and that means Phil Locke's kings hold up as he wins the pot. <laughs> Marco loses the hand, still perfectly coiffed, however. And there's the convulsion of bliss from the Unibomb. Yeah, 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 yeah.